And I return to Let's Play Shadows of New York. I know Arturo tends to leave the Elysium quite often to take in some fresh air and message people on his Blackberry, so I just wait until I see him. The tactic works. He's surprised to see me. Miss Winsky, shouldn't you be busy with your investigation? Is the masquerade still going on? Or the party, I mean? I mean, I know that this is an event throughout the week, but I feel like the ball... Whatever. I am, actually, which is why I've come to see you. That's peculiar, because I'm absolutely sure I have nothing to do with this case. Aren't you barking up the wrong tree? That's what I'm here to find out. I assumed you'd want to see I am thorough. Yes, sure, I suppose it's commendable. What is it, then? I have reasons to believe that in the last few months, you, the High Regent Ashling Sturbridge, and her child Agathon were involved in a secretive scheme. His expression changes ever so imperceptibly, but the difference is palpable to me. For the first time ever, he looks at me as a person. Up until now, I was just an assuming diversion. Amusing diversion, even. Now I'm something more, and he doesn't like it. What gave you this idea? I'm not at liberty to say. If you really want to know, ask the sheriff. Of course, Kadir doesn't know anything, but he's the only one in the court that Arturo has repeatedly failed to influence. He'll think twice before approaching him. I fail to see how this matter relates to the task at hand. I have every, every reason to think Baron Callahan was involved and that he might have had grounds to fear for his life because of said scheme. He's tense now. Do I have the upper hand? Miss Swinsky. Please, answer the question. The delicate matter you are speaking of has absolutely nothing to do with Baron Callahan's grim fate. It's a strictly confidential affair. It would be wise of you to stop pursuing it. It would be wise of you to fuck off. I can't be invent an investigator if I'm not allowed to properly investigate. This matter is unrelated to your work and should be treated as such. I am 100% convinced Prince Pennard would agree. If you insist on pursuing it further, we can take it up on the, to the Prince and see if her stance differs from mine. But I think you aren't as naive as to waste her time this way. And besides, she'd certainly want you to present the basis for your discovery to the court. Could you handle it? Uh, well, I mean... I have no response. God damn it. This is his revenge for invoking Kadir, isn't it? I thought so. Is the High Regent inside? She is, but don't worry. I'll make sure to tell her not to waste your precious time, Miss Swinsky. So that's how you're gonna play it, is it, you bastard? Well, I guess you win this round. A strategic retreat is my only choice here. I don't have a full deck of cards yet, but just you wait. In a few nights... I'll take my leave, then. Yes, do that. And if I may be so blunt, focus on the investigation avenues that aren't utterly imbecilic and suicidal to pursue, miss. I bid you adieu. I curse him out under my breath as he disappears inside the art hole. Guess his avenue... this avenue really is cut off for me, at least for now. Three names left on the list. I still have some leads to go by. But for now, it's getting late. I should go to St. Patrick's and file my latest report. When I reach the cathedral, Father Leonard is already there. He's not exactly the most punctual person, so I always feel relieved to see him from afar. Time to move in and move out before I'm noticed by Benoit. Will this be all? I guess so. I rattled off most of it in a hurry on the way here. I'll come up with more a more exhaustive report tomorrow night. Is he? Looks that way, Father. Our wayward girl has finally been recognized by her superiors. Here we go again. Of course he had to sneak up on me. If you... if even you heard about that, I guess that means every single kindred in the five boroughs knows. I know you're an expert when it comes to knowing who's saying what and where, but the last time we met, you promised to share that knowledge with me. Yeah, I was kind of lying. That's the ninth, ninth commandment, Broken Father. Shouldn't you scold her? Don't involve me in your silly games, Benoit. The way you fall for obvious lies stems from your biggest failing in communication. And that is, you only pay attention to the what that's being said, and not the how. That's... Booyah, motherfucker, suck it! Annihilated with an absolutely flawless diagnosis. Child, don't make me regret siding with you. I'm sorry, Father. Won't happen again, especially if you promise to keep verbally destroying that clown. You're in a strange mood tonight, child. Go get some sleep. Yes, we'll continue this tomorrow. I'm not showing up here tomorrow. Yes, you are. Stop breaking the Ninth Commandment. See you around, Julia. 
He says my name in a sickly sweet way that gives me the creeps. I bow to Father Leonard, do my best to ignore Benoit, and head for Dakota's place. Finally, my haven. Hey. Hey. Another tough night? You don't know the half of it. You want a drink? She points to her neck. I manage to summon a faint smile. I'd love to, but you know we can't do this too often. Maybe tomorrow. You want to talk then? Yeah, guess so. Just not about work, okay? I sit down next to her. Not about work. Got it. What's on your mind then? The past, I guess. Meaning? How spotty our memories are, and how despite that, that's what we build our convictions on. Sorry, it's so banal. I'm just tired and frustrated. Well, let's talk about something more specific then. What do you remember about the first time we met? The time we first met? Yeah. Shit. Not a lot, actually. Those were gloomy, anxious days. I think I subconsciously replaced most of them with blank spaces. I remember you trying to paint your black, your hair black. Ouch. Take up my trauma now, okay? I remember that when we first talked, we talked about... Aosu. What? Don't say house. Low-key low key racist, I think. I don't even know what it is. Nobody ever knows what you mean by house. Oh, the Japanese. Now that makes sense. And, I mean, that would be a, a Japanese English transliteration. Um, nobody ever knows what you mean by house. Uh, that show about the asshole doctor? No, the Japanese haunted house horror film that feels like it was written by a seven-year-old with ADHD. In the best way. That was a very... God, the writing in this is questionable. I just gotta say. I, you know, part of it is that I have a stupid mouth and I stumble over everything, but it's it's it doesn't flow nicely. It's very hard to read. In the best way. Duh. We were arguing which characters from the movie both of us are. You were Kung Fu, and I ended up as Prof, which was rude. You were dressed up like a total nerd. Not my fault. What was the deal with that suit? I like that suit. Yeah, it was okay. I remember helping you out with graphic design whenever you needed it. Funny, I remember you needing help with writing is something that tended to happen far more often. Yeah, we developed a fun shared aesthetic with similar surface concerns, and it bonded us together even before we made sure we were fully compatible deep down as human beings. Hell, I'm still not sure we are, especially now with me not being a human being anymore. But hey, at least we both agree that this be bedroom feels super comfy. Elwers, <sighs> I remember always feeling left out of your social circles. Always knocking at the door from the outside. Don't forget it. My social circles were full of out-of-touch, snobby assholes. Yeah, but it felt weird how much they avoided me. There was one, that one time with Isabella. All of a sudden, one thing Isabella said at that one party flashes in my mind with startling clarity. After midnight, in that kitchen, without context, she just walked up to me and... She will isolate you. She will suck you dry and she'll move on to the next target. That's the only thing she knows. Don't remind me of Isabella. She always resented me. It's been so long, and it's all baseless conjecture now, but what if... What if she really did isolate me on purpose back then? Ah, the glass is half full. The past is Schrodinger's cat and all that. Better to believe in the positive version of events. Come to think of it, friend or foe, if you don't believe they're on your side, they will know it one way or the other, and then it's 100% certain they won't be on your side. The optimism really is the way. Yeah, forget about Isabella. Let's just drop this talk. I'm frustrated enough. I need a reset. Sounds like a good idea. Hop to sleep? Yeah, I gotta get ready to go back to hell tomorrow. Alright, I'll get back to work. You're working remotely again? Yeah, my office is going insane for so many reasons. I'm getting cabin fever, too. Get some sun. It'll be good for you. Look who's talking. Good night, sunshine. Good night. Okay, rest. So he's still there. <laughs> a few minutes after I wake up, I see a message slipped under the apartment's front door. Kadir? Wait a minute, did we unlock any terminology last time? No, I think we just unlocked that trade. Yep, 
Looks like he's got a short window to meet me in Queens a few hours from now. Well, it's point. Single suggestion. Get ready for action. Fine, then. I will. Best way to do it would be to clear my mind. Just walk without thinking. Reset the framework. Some fresh air should do it. Maybe a chance meeting with someone could get me out of this mental rut. Let me look at the world from a different angle for a while and improve my mood. Although when it comes to improving one's mood, nothing beats some crimson red pouring down my throat. Not to mention, these cigarettes taste better, best with a full stomach. Let's go. Oh, we did lose him. Okay, so at least I know that for now. We get two. Two choices. So, possibly we've missed out on an interaction with Samira. Hide and seek for dummies. I'm being tailed. The last thing I need right now is a weirdo stalker following my every step. Did I take this investigation too far down the rabbit hole? Or that's my table. There's no place like home, and I need a little peace. Big Beep Burger, here I come. But wait, who is this loon? Well, feeding from a guy who's following me, but isn't this the guy who works for Callahan from the last time? I feel like this could get us closer to an Anarch deal. And if not, if they're just reusing a portrait, we can probably ambush this guy and drink, so... Yeah. I'm sure there are better ways of finding solitude than wandering aimlessly in the endless downpour. There are nights when I dived straight into a thiz thizzed crowd. Goddamn kids and their fucking slang. And vicariously enjoy the sweet... Hip their, their sweat, their hypnotic moves, and mindless self-indulgence. When my body starts to resonate with the relentless wall of sound, everyone disappears and I'm raptured into a perfect kind of isolation. Then there are those nights when I crash on the couch while Dakota goes on a rant about something so far removed from my area of interest I zone out and enjoy the privacy of my own thoughts. But then there are moments like this one. Nights when I just want everyone to shut the fuck up so I can think. Those nights I usually end up mindlessly strolling along the rain-swept streets before inevitably ending up at Big Beat Burger. Or at least that used to be the norm, before this whole mess. Lately, even that kind of solitude seems out of my reach, especially when I'm being tailed by a poor man's Ethan Hunt on a crash diet. He's been following me for ten minutes, and so far he has managed to bump into an empty newsstand, make enemies of several cab drivers, and even got bitch-slapped by a living statue while trying to blend in. Okay, as he shortens the distance, I grab a nearby lamppost and swing myself around like Gene Kelly, using the momentum to quickly turn around and look right at him. Ah, hell nah. He springs up into the nearest alley. I wonder if he thinks that somehow I did not notice. If we want to trap him, we could at least lead him somewhere. Oh, fuck that guy. It's not like he'll keep following me after this fiasco. Okay, well, that was the wrong choice. I'm about to walk away when an obnoxious voice not belonging to the creep catches my ear. It's coming from the same alley. It's followed by a loud crash from sounds like the metal... <sighs> it's followed by a loud crash from sounds like the metal side of a garbage dumpster followed by a painful moan. Maybe the stalker got himself in trouble? <sighs> I mean, this isn't really my problem, but we are out here to feed, right? This is an opportunity to do so, and then we can also maybe get information on why this guy is stalking me. We are, after all, an investigative journalist. I should let that creep deal with this himself. I should, but I won't. Can't have a moment's rest in this goddamn city, can I? As I barge into the alley, I notice two hooded jocks bullying my scrawny stalker. While the big guy wrestles with a high-tech smartphone, the sleeker one keeps punching. How nice of them to share responsibilities. Fuck him up? Oh, absolutely. Although I'm pretty good at this, too. So that could be fun. But I feel like she's probably in the mood for this, huh? Although, I don't know. The last time we attacked a thug, 
But we were the strong man. We still got our asses kicked. We're pretty good at dominate. That's kind of fun, actually. I don't know. Is she this kind? Is she the kind to get in there, or would she just revel in doing that? I mean, what, what would a Lissandra do? A Lissandra who... She probably wouldn't dirty her hands, right? All right. The roughneck notices me, drops the phone, and looks into my eyes. Big mistake. He freezes in places I bore into his mind. Grab the little guy and keep running east as far as you can. The thug stiffens like it's the first time a complex idea has ever popped into his head. He turns towards his mortified buddy, grabs him kicking and screaming, and takes off like a cartoon caveman with a kidnapped bride slung over his shoulder. That's not really what I'd hoped for. I need a body. I, should, I guess I should have beat the shit out of him so I could drink. Their struggle seems so comically out of place in this dingy alley, I can't help but chuckle. I pick up the pe peculiar smartphone on my way over to the stalker. It doesn't take a genius to figure out it belongs to him. The screen is locked and glitches oddly as soon as I touch it. No surprises there. The stalker seems relieved, but at the same time unnerved by the fact I'm holding his property. He tries to exhibit some confidence, but his trembling voice undermines the effort. Listen, I don't want to sound ungrateful or anything, but I'd like that back. It's not like you can use it anyway, right? The nervous smirk on his already punchable face kind of makes me wish that I'd left him to his own devices. I'm of two minds about handing over something I could use to gain leverage over the sleazy asshole who's been stalking me for God knows how long. Yeah. What, this little thing right here? Yes, that little thing. Give it back. Are you sure you want it back? Actually, no. He's Inquisition, isn't he? Looks so tasteless and dorky. Overwhelmingly dorky. Wearing a Star Trek t-shirt to an opera dorky. Like, Elon Musk probably thinks it's chic and cool dorky. I ain't joking. You see that? I almost dropped it right into the storm drain. Shit, that was close. Oh, for fuck's sake, come on. My boss will disembowel me the, on the spot if something happens to that phone. Say the magic word. Jesus fucking... Yeah, okay, please. Please can I have it back. The second he tries something, it goes back into my hands and under my heel. There you go. He catches the phone with the liveliness of a little boy getting his first video game console. Thanks, Jules. I really appreciate it. He knows my name and makes a point of bragging about it. Not particularly subtle. Why the fuck are you following me? Are you with the Camarilla? Did somebody tell you to watch my steps? He looks confused when I mention the sect's name. I realize after the fact it was probably a really stupid thing to say, a random, or say to a random creep. Not sure what a caramella is. Sounds tasty. So, in this game, it's not Camarilla, it's pronounced Camarilla. Which is, of course, up for debate amongst fans, but, you know. My boss, he's an important guy. You want to be on his good side, let me tell you. That said, he doesn't tell me anything I don't need to know, and all I know is he wanted me to keep an eye on you tonight. Something something you're being watched, something something powerful, friends? It's the best you've got? You're not getting anything else from me. If you want to finish with those alleys where alley rats started, go ahead, but you'll be wasting your time, Jules. The loser seems to brace for a hit, contouring his face into a confusing grimace, which was probably meant to express bravado. I'm not going to give him the satisfaction. Fair enough, but call me Jules again, and this time when you lose your phone, you'll need a proctologist to help you find it. Kinky, ain't you? I'll see you later. You won't if you know what's good for you. He doesn't respond. As he limps away, I realize the rain is slowly, let, slowly letting up, and that once more I'm left with more questions than answers. I decide to get on with my night and focus on the relief that comes with realizing I'm not the voyeuristic object of some creep's interest. Been there, done that. Wouldn't recommend. Time to get a move on. It's time to get back to work. I step inside. Is that a shadow I see before me? Because it's like, it's like there's reflections, but there's nobody in the car, and it's a little weird. I step inside the subway and head for my meeting with Kadir. No, for fuck's sake. I thought you were kidding. Nope, I couldn't reach her, but I know for a fact Hope is there. She's pointing in the direction of a double spiral building. And what is she doing there? I understand she's the current leader of the company. Acting CEO, to be exact. No, 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 you're pulling my leg. Of all the places in this city... 
The company that brags about creating IT solutions of the future, always surrounded by rumors of monstrous workers' abuse, all sorts of ethical violations, trading information with governments, and ending the career of a certain promising journalist and professional fuck-up who attempted to investigate them seriously. You might be able to ask her both professional and personal questions. Two birds with one stone. I don't get it. Last time I checked, the company belonged to Kara Montgomery. I'm told she quietly took a sabbatical a few months ago, and it sure looks like the kind of sabbatical you don't come back from. Well, corporate backstabbing, I guess. Corporate backstabbing? Not a single corporate shark is as good at drawing blood as a patrician kindred. Pretty sure there are bigger powers involved. I remember I was shocked when I first learned that one of my nemeses back in my old life was a vampire all along. When I realized her position made her untouchable to me, I was beyond mad. Well, whatever happened, it couldn't happen to a nicer person. What about her brother, Jesse? You're asking me? Last I checked, you were the expert on this company. I just handled the basic intel for you, even though I shouldn't even really be here. Yeah, and I hope you realize I am grateful. You'd better be. So is Hope just another corporate shark? Well, she is the Chidal of Carter. A theatrical pause. He smiles as he sees me wince. But very much unlike him, he took her in for her particular multifaceted talents related to the Internet. Knowing he's hopelessly behind the times in that regard, I hear she's been unruly, though. Well, unruly is good. I can work with unruly. So you're telling me she might not be a stuck-up startup bitch? Language. As I've told you a few times now, when it comes to the internet, just assume I haven't the slightest idea. I'm getting there myself. I haven't been able to check my email for five months. I have no idea what the kids at BBB are talking about most of the time. God, I might be getting old. Don't worry, the moment you realize you don't give a damn about fads you would have cared about years ago is a liberating one. And they're done that, at the beginning of the 20th century. Anyway, you'll probably hear Hope's story straight from the horse's mouth. I don't have much time, so I'll get straight to the point. You shouldn't be looking at anything in the main building. It's just a front. Ignore it. What you want to do is use the elevators to get to the lowest floor of the building. I heard stories about the double spiral basement, but I had no idea what to make of them. Every source told me a different rumor. Did any of them tell you a rumor about an army of underground ghouls? No, but I'm all ears. Double Spiral employs an army of ghouls as a cheap workforce. They work and live underground, away from prying eyes, with lesser rights than regular kind employees. Perfect for business. Wow. I'm actually speechless for a second. I have profoundly low expectations of that company, but every time I learn something new about what's going on behind the scenes, I'm still surprised at the level of scumbaggery at play. I'll leave the moral judgments to you, expert. In any case, you need to reach room number 507 the CEO re supposedly resides underground? I thought you just told me to go down. And then? Get Hope to answer your questions. His old-timey flip phone vibrates. Speaking of, if you've got any left for me, it's now or never. I'm needed at the art hole, now. <sighs> I mean, I imagine security's tight, she's got an army. So what's the best approach? I've told you everything I know. Just do what I do it all the time. But just do what I do all the time. And that is, scout the situation, then decide. Right, I forget that's what you do all the time. You mean scouting? No, stating the obvious. The phone vibrates again. Well, that's it for me. Arturo is pestering me to show up at Elysium five minutes ago. Tell him I kindly suggest he should go fuck himself. Not in a thousand years. Well, good luck with your mission, soldier. With a mock salute, he disappears inside his car and drives away. Nothing left for me to, but to head in. I'm still anxious. There are two approaches to choose from, and whichever I pick, I'll have to stick with it. If I force my way in and assert my authority, bad cop style, that should make an impression. Bad bitch coming in with the entire court behind her back, bluffing her way to victory. Sneaking in and politely asking for cooperation seems like the less disruptive, more me option, but it's not like being me has taken me anywhere thus far. Shit. I kind of wish I was still stuck in my routine where I didn't need to do things like developing a personality. It's a bit of a coin flip, honestly, but I gotta make a choice here. How do I approach Double Spiral? I mean... Coversion works, and we can always do domination, right? 
We don't need to go in all guns blazing, I guess. Uh, being aggressive is not me. I don't even want to think about the headaches I'd have to deal with. After all, we are not, uh... Not a bad cop. We are not from the angry clan. The less disruptive I am, the better chance they won't get pissed off at me. And I do need hope to be cooperative. This good cop approach should pay off eventually. Alright, let's do this. I cloak myself in shadows and let my instinct take over. The lobby isn't well lit, so it's not hard to get behind the lone security guard. He does notice something is wrong with the security cameras and hits the display a few times, but once he's done, I'm already inside an emergency staircase and making the descent. The doors to the deepest floor are locked, but it takes just a bit of brute force, and I'm inside. Hello, Double Spiral. Thought you wouldn't see me again, huh? Assholes. I look around and find an emergency evacuation map. Bullseye. Looks like all the information I need is here. There it is, room 507. Ah, uh, the girl from the thing. Someone comes around. Looks like one of Hope's nerdy ghouls is here to sniff around, but I'm already in the shadows. I slink away as she starts patrolling the corridor, checking if everything is okay. Cameras, body heat sensors, electronic locks. Still, I'm managing. I mean, would they function with me? I remain cautious, just like Kadir would want me to, but it's surprisingly easy for me to avoid security. Progressing towards room 507 is far easier than expected. I reach the double spiral offices where, just like Kadir said, hordes of ghouls are slaving away for their company. Deep learning, spyware, social media manipulation, yada yada. The important thing right now is everyone is staring at their own screen, so it's easy for me to keep sneaking. Aside from the fact she still seems to be on my trail, only slowed by the fact she's th thorough in her search. Better pick up the pace. There it is, the final corridor. Time to announce myself. I slowly walk to the end of the corridor. There it is, room 507. The door looks harder to take care of than the other ones in this place. Probably won't be able to take care of it the same way I did the others. The door to the office of the current Double Spiral CEO. This fucking company. I get pissed off, but I'm trying to control it. There's a camera by the door. If she knows what to look for, she can probably see I'm here on her screen. But just to make sure, I knock on the door. Hope, I'm a Camarilla detective, and I will need you to answer some questions. Hope, I know you're in there. Open the door. I will not leave until you do. I'm here on the behalf of the Sheriff of New York City. Hope, I keep pounding on the door, calling her name. After a minute or so, a voice rings out in the intercom. Is this thing on? I guess it is. All right, I got your message loud and clear. I'll meet you in the offices. I'll be right there. Looks like you made it past poor Nastia. Get back to the offices and keep her company. She's probably beyond pissed off about you eluding her grasp, but don't make it a big deal, okay? Thank you for your cooperation. I'll be right there. What's up? On the one hand, clothes you could probably reasonably expect to find in any CEO's wardrobe. On the other, a body covered in tattoos, flashy jewelry, dyed hair, and wild makeup. The thought that she might be yet another CEO playing the nonconformist crosses my mind, but she strikes me as someone who's more than happy to live in her own little bubble. Still, I won't be fooled. She is the boss of Double Spiral. So, uh, how'd you find me? Sheriff Kadir al Azmai did. You'd have to ask him. I take out a new cigarette without thinking. You can't smoke here, lady. Just let her. Don't treat me like I'm your enemy. I come in peace. A deep, relaxing drag. So, when did you realize I was here? Right at the start. There was a momentary laser malfunction. Lasted a second or two. Hasn't tripped an alarm, but I guess something was off. That's it? Hunches have gotten me every job I've ever had. Hunches saved my life any time I got into a messy situation. These days, the reality is too complicated to rely on anything else. Can't find a better head of security than our Nastya, and Nastya, Nastya. And her hunches are the main reason why. They're like a sixth sense. Don't I know you from somewhere? Not well, I mean, I do, but... Oh, we probably... This is probably talking to her. And Nastya. Haven't I seen you somewhere? The note, a club, maybe? Yeah, last year, soon after I was embraced. I visited that one club that in that refurbished warehouse, and you were there. 
You've got a memorable aura. Yeah, I DJ and help out there from time to time. Gotta show my face if I want to make it big. Now why don't you focus on that? Following that career path doesn't exactly seem compatible with being head of security for Double Spiral. Not just because the necessary skill sets are so different. Nastya looks at Hope. Working at Double Spiral provides a lot of benefit to someone who relies on the internet for promotion, lady. The slowed aging is just a nice perk. Lovely chat, girls, but I'd love it if you stay saved it for later. I'm CEO now. I have a lot of duties I must pretend to handle. I just need to ask you a few questions. Yeah, sure. Call me if you need me. I've got a weird hunch about this one, too. Don't worry, I'll disappear as quietly as I arrived. Yeah, I'd prefer to be sure that you left, lady, so that I can report it to my boss. We'll talk security later. Don't worry, this shit happens. For now, take five. Nastya leaves, and I'm left alone with Hope in the corner of the office. It feels funny to stand here in front of you. Oh, and uh, why is that? You people had me fired from my job before I was embraced. Ah, I see. You're the uh, Sawinski girl from Lodestar. Yeah. Somehow I never put two and two together. So you're the Lasombra rep for this rep city now, huh? As she's talking to me, she keeps tapping at her phone in terif with terrifying speed. I don't feel like I have her full focus, and it's getting on my nerves. Just so you know, I have no idea why you've taken Kara Montgomery's place, and I doubt you'd tell me. But the bitch deserves to burn in hell. Oh yeah, she does. Wait, did, did she just admit... Hold your horses. No. Jesus, this is why normal CEOs pay for PR people to talk for them. I only agree that she's a horrible person in every way that counts. Nothing more. Does she know that's why you th what you think of her? Why did she let you take her position in the first place? What... I will just cut through the bullshit, okay, Miss Lodestar? I guess this is about Jesse and Kara covering this, his creepy ass. This is about Jesse... Kama and Kara covering his creepy ass. You spent months on this case, and you'd like some closure. Pretty much. Well, here's your closure. Double Spiral has severed practically all ties with them. They don't work here. They get no company money. They probably won't ever show here again. The company is not their circus anymore, and the workers are not their monkeys. I'm in charge now. So yeah, if there's anything you'd like from me, I'm all ears. It wasn't just Jesse and his sister. This company has been ingrained... This company has ingrained structures of abuse and immoral... I've ordered internal investigations and audits. Everyone related to those illicit activities was disciplined. Legal actions, firings, and rebukes, all depending on the severity of their misdemeanors. I don't have a stomach for all that creepy corporate shit, so I'm trying to steer this ship in the right direction. Don't know what else I can tell you. Fuck's sake. No matter how I look at it, it seems like she's done everything I hope to achieve. The Montgomery clan is over. Queen Bitch, a symbol of everything that's wrong with tech CEOs, is gone. Jesse, that perverted, embezzling son of a bitch, is gone. I should be glad, so... Why is there a sinking pit in my stomach? Doesn't feel right. Doesn't feel right as in she's hiding something, I would assume. This doesn't feel right. Probably not, but hey, I look at this company like a mafia... Like the mafias in gangster movies... You don't really win by dismantling one, another one will just as quickly take its place. You can only win by ensuring the organization gets the best possible leader. So, in Double Spiral's case, the best you can hope for, no pun intended, is me. The biggest case in my professional life, solved by some weirdo who fucked Kara and Jesse over in presumably underhanded ways. It doesn't get more anticlimactic than this. Fucking hell. I want to ask her how she did it. But why would she tell me? All I can guess is she's an outcast who decided to get her hands dirty and obtain power to do something she considered good. Something I've always wanted, or I've always been afraid to do. Anyway, I feel for you, but I have a lot of work to do, so uh, if this wasn't just a trip down memory lane and you have any other questions, speak now or forever hold your peace, okay? I feel like a car just ran over me, but I need to keep my shit together. Right. A few days ago, the Anarch Baron was found dead in his office. If you Are you familiar with this case? Douglas Callahan. Of course I'm familiar. Every kindred online is talking about it. What are they saying? They're accusing everyone. I mean, it is the internet. Are they accusing you? Why would they do that? I found a peculiar note in Callahan's remains. It had your name on it. Huh? What can you say about this? Nothing. I never met the guy. i never even seen him. It wasn't my crowd. Then why would he have a note with your name in his pocket? Why were Walt Disney's last written words Kurt Russell? No clue. 
I watch her closely, but nothing suggests she's hiding anything. Well, the note actually contained three other names and nothing else. Agathon, D'Angelo, Tamika. Ringing any bells now? Her finger, which hasn't stopped moving across the phone touchscreen since I first saw her, freezes. Yeah, kind of does, actually. It's a short list of promising unaffiliated kindred that was making the rounds in New York City a few months ago, in case anyone needed a hero for hire. I didn't know Callahan had it. I know Sophie Langley did, as well as a few Primogen. Not sure about the Anarchs. Who could have prepared this list? One of the local information brokers. A short but telling pause. Anonymous. How anonymous? Sort of anonymous. She's obviously conflicted about whether she should tell me, or maybe she's pretending so that I worm it out of her. I've been a good sport ever since I walked through her door. Maybe appealing to her sense of morality will work. I really need your help. I want to prevent the tensions between the local anarchs and the court from escalating, and every lead helps. She briefly considers her option. Z -z, then gives up. It's my sire. Carter Wonderbra. Oh. He's brokering information? Everyone knows becoming the Prince of New York is his ultimate goal, and that he wants to make friends in all the high places. Sharing useful intel is a pretty effective way to achieve that. So you're telling me that he, a Malkavian primogen, sold this list to an Anarch Baron. Sure looks like it. Why would he suggest his own child to somebody? To have a person on the inside, just another way to further his information web. Wouldn't they realize you two are close? The story goes going around is, he left me alone and I hate his guts. Well, at least half of that is true. She's talkative. Probably sees me as a way to undermine Carter. Let's see how much further I can push her. Uh, I was wondering how someone like you could control a company like Double Spiral. I suppose a friend in high places would explain it. Yeah, lucky me. Not happy about being a boss? Leading one of the biggest IT companies in the country? A boss, huh? She stares at dozens of displays on the wall in front of her. Do you remember the Y2K era of the internet? Boy, do I. Jesus, I barely remember the internet at all. My people can't really use it. But yeah, I guess I sort of remember. Forums, GeoCities, Browser Wars, all those handmade amateurish web pages. Ah, <sighs> it's a different time. It was a golden age. You forgot web rings, though, lady. I'm old enough for web rings. Everyone was welcome to freely express their creativity and obsessions in this abstract fr new frontier. No formulated rules. Every site was a distinct new universe to explore, usually created with tables and terrible formatting. You know, as a kid, for some reason, I kept saving every web page that moved or changed me in some way. I don't even know why I did it. But today, a folder with these things is one of my greatest treasures. And you could totally pull a full page using Internet Explorer, because that's how that operated. It saved that shit to your computer, and you could pull out everything you hadn't deleted in the cookies. Fast forward today. To today. I'm the boss of a company that has an overarching goal. Steer the online narrative in every possible way that benefits the Camarilla. And because the online world is so fucked up right now, I can't do it without using only five websites or so. I can do it. Fuck me, try that again. And because the online world is so fucked right now, I can do it using only five websites or so. Especially because they all just fold in on each other and cite each other. It's really screwed up. Every day I deploy thousands of believable sock puppets to force some belief on the masses. Right now they are being managed by these ghouls. Soon they'll be partially managed by AI. Basically an all-American version of the Chinese 50 cent party. A new pattern of public opinion guidance. Ever since I was a teen, I've pretended to be different people online for fun. Aping the posting patterns of others was something I turned out to be horrifyingly good at. I became even better at it after the embrace. Something about the voice of Malcav in my head. After several years, I became a one-person internet empire. I could impersonate anyone. I dream of tulips, a humble florist from Chattanooga who drives to share who strives to share positive energy with their audience using photos of beautiful bouquets, motivational quotes, and the occasional office gif. Vulva Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff. A single mom a, a single mom, huh? From Brighton who reckons all these trans women must be bonkers and spends seemingly every waking moment of her life having a row with anyone who disagrees. 
I mean, this game has more than once shown that the uh, the writer is um, using British vernacular. <sighs> For an American story, Polygon Classicist, a 19-year-old kid from Utah who keeps posting Y2K 3D renders of poorly proportioned, scantily clad ladies and telling his audience to remember what they took from you. Somehow this talent got me here, where it's no longer fun but work. Work I usually entrust to these ghouls because of all my duties. I want out before my entire fucking mind gets monetized. But Carter won't have that, so I'll keep doing my best for him and Double Spiral's investors. So that's why she wants me to look at him. I assume most of your operations focus on New York City. A lot of them, yeah. How do you imitate a New Yorker voice with these sock puppet accounts? Living in Manhattan and being, uh, mentally unstable makes this shit easy. To a normal, well-adjusted person from outside the city, everyone here seems mentally unstable. Ever watch that 9-11 Howard Stern show? No. Check it out someday, it's educational. Ask anyone- and, and there's also a whole lot of leaning into real-world conspiracies in the writing as well. Isn't that fun? Ask anyone in New York about it, and they're like, it was a great bonding moment. He was helping us make sense of everything. He kept saying what we were all thinking. Then you listen to it, and everyone's yelling that we need to nuke something. Maybe the entire world. Get rid of the Muslims. Fuck human rights. No investigations. Take their oil. Cheery. You watch it, you study it, you witness that specific brand of humor on the face of, in the face of tragedy, and you understand nothing outside of New York really exists for the people who live here. Or the vampires. Foundational text, really. Whenever I need to get in that New York mindset for work, I let it play in the background. Works like a charm. Seriously, give it a shot sometime. Someday I might. For now, I think I'll confront von der Wagen. <laughs> and why do... <sighs> That's just gonna be a thing. And what you've told me. With what you've told me. Or is it you, you haven't told me? What's the story? Me? Of course I haven't told you anything. You're such a good investigator, you figure it out by yourself. And if he asks, tell him Kaiser sold you the info. That should do the trick. I see. Thank you. Before, I did nothing. Let Nastya show you out. And if you don't know von der Vaden's address, just ask her. Thank you for having me, Mr. OK. Are we g -manese? There is no pause in this anymore. I don't like this. There, this could easily just be chunked easier into story pieces. Anyway, we're going to end this one here. We'll pick this up next time. <laughs>